so have you heard of like false positive false negative anyone here so what is false positive here so what is false positive can anyone explain so false positive means that is not there but you are claiming it is there okay is type 1 error is a false positive is type 2 error is a false positive right so it is null hypothesis but you are accepting is as yeah it is alternate hypothesis but you are accepting it as null hypothesis if you are null hypothesis you are going to consider as the actual thing sorry if uh, in this case yeah this is going to be false positive because you are saying it is positive but the underlying one is actually negative it is coming from alternate hypothesis okay so this is like all this false positive false negative is the mostly used in uh, this machine learning languages but that is basically statistics type 1 and type 2 error which has been rebranded as false positive and false negatives now if my theta is coming from my null hypothesis and i am asking what is the probability that my x is belongs to the rejection region so what is this is going to give me the samples under my null hypothesis being treat being labeled as that belonging to alternate hypothesis that means basically this is a type 1 error so the probability of x belongings to the rejection region under my parameter theta which is coming from my null space is type 1 error okay and similarly if theta belongings to that theta complement that means theta is coming from alternate hypothesis but i am accepting it so notice that i am taking the one minus of the rejection so this is the acceptance probability so it is actually the alternate hypothesis but i am accepting it that means this this probability will give me type 2 error okay this is given your rejection region r now uh, this theta x belongs to r is type 1 when this theta is belonging to theta not and similarly this theta maybe i should say belongs to maybe i'll simply say our complement here is type 2 when your theta is belonging to theta 0 okay this leads as to something called power functions so power functions are always associated with the given region uh, rejection region r given your rejection region r power function is a function of theta which is simply given as type 1 error okay or oh, sorry it is simply given like this is defined for every theta it's not necessary that theta is coming from your null hypothesis or alternate hypothesis what it is saying that probability that your sample x being rejected under the parameter theta okay okay sorry let's interpret uh, correctly what this p of theta x belongings to r is telling you it is telling that so x s here is a they are coming from some pdf right if that underlying pdf pdf probability is theta and you are going to take the probability here with respect to computing this probability with respect to this pdf and now that value being rejected this is going to be giving you the power function okay 
Now let us see how should an ideal power hypothesis test look like. If you have given a rejection function r, what should be the value of p of theta x belongs to r if theta is coming from your null space. So, if your sample is coming from null space, you want to be rejected or accepted? Yeah. If that, uh, if your sample is already as, if it is coming from the null space, you should be accepted, right? But here you are talking about the rejection probability. So, this probability should be, it should be low, okay? On the other hand, if your theta is already coming from your alternate hypothesis, then what should be this probability of rejection should be higher side. But as we discussed, it is not possible like uh, to attain uh, both type 1 and type 2 error to be large, sorry, like one is high and another is low because we said right, like by shifting this boundary, so this boundary is what going to define your rejection region you can shift it towards left to in, in improve your ex, ex, acceptance probability or minimize your rejection probability, but that is going to affect it to be accepting the sample from the other distribution as belonging to the null hypothesis. It is not just that uh, the, by shifting these boundaries or changing my uh, rejection region, I will be able to achieve both of it, okay? So then, but we always want best of both worlds. What we want is we would be looking for an hypothesis which is going to make this rejection probabilities very small or almost tending to zero when that theta parameter is coming from null hypothesis and want it to be almost going to 1 when my parameter is going to come to from alternate hypothesis. So, if, if there is a such an ideal hypothesis, I would be very happy about this, okay? But uh, it may always not be the case and uh, there has to be some sweet balance one has to find between these two matrices. That is, I want type 1 error to go to, so this is like a type 1 error, right? This is like a uh, type 1 error. That is, the parameter is actual one, but I am rejecting it. Type 1 error should goes to 0, whereas, yeah, I am just, uh, okay, this type 2 error should also be going to 0, but like, yeah, I am just only focusing on this part without 1 minus, that is going to 1. I want to achieve both of it. Okay, now let us look into quickly couple of examples about the calculations of, let us take a simple case of binomial distribution with phi samples, sorry, uh, binomial distribution with n equals to phi and uh, theta equals to some number I do not know. And uh, I want to make a hypothesis on my theta. My hypothesis are theta is less than half and theta is greater than half. Now, what are my possible tests and how they fare in terms of type 1 and type 2 errors? You can always construct your lambda x for some c and define a rejection region like this. This is going to be your LRT test, okay? But instead of that, I am looking into some other test that are more natural. So, okay, like I am, so theta is less than half and theta is greater than half. What could be one natural test? I am saying that if theta is less than half, maybe I will not see all ones in my phi samples, 
because uh, like if theta is less than half, maybe some of them will be 0. On the other hand, if theta is greater than half, maybe like I seeing all the ones is more likely because one observing is more likely, right? You are getting this point or no? So, based on that, I may come up with one trivial rejection region, say that if all this in this binomial that uh, basically this is a Bernoulli, five Bernoullis, right? If all these five observations I am going to make, they are all one, then I am going to take it to be alternate hypothesis. If not, I am going to take it to be null hypothesis. So, I am kind of being uh, uh, very crude here saying that oh, uh, if theta is greater than half, then maybe all of them will be 1. Okay, that is my saying, like saying that okay, only if all the values are 1, take it to be uh, 1, then simply reject it, otherwise simply accept it to be null hypothesis. So, in this case, my rejection region has only one sample, that is 1, 1, 1, 1. Right? So, if only if I observe all ones, then I am going to reject, otherwise I am accepting. So, my rejection region has just one sample and by definition, beta 1 of theta is what? Probability of theta x belongs to r. And here, oh, and x is nothing but here 1, 1, 1, sorry, here my x what is my this one? This is 1, 1, 1. So, and that means all my x's, xi's are 1, which is nothing but theta to the power phi, right? Did anybody, everybody follow this? So, I am just saying, and if under parameter theta, observing all 1's is going to be theta, theta, power, theta to the power phi, right? Because theta, theta multiplied by phi times. which is 5 times. Now, in this case, let us try to see what is the type 1 error. Now, you have this beta 1 of, sorry, this, this is a for test 1, beta 1 of theta is 5 and If this theta is less than or equals to half, then it is if the whenever this theta is less than or equals to half, this is coming from the null hypothesis which I wanted. And now as a function of theta, this is increasing in theta. So, the maximum value of this beta 1 theta for theta less than or equals to half is simply going to be half of 2 to the power 5. So, this is going to give me a upper bound on type 1 error. Everyone agree? So, why I restricted this to half? Because I am looking for type 1 error in which theta is going to be coming from my null hypothesis and the largest value of that is like till half that is why I put half and I got this value. And type 2 error is simply going to be a complement of this right and I just take 1 minus of this and I will get 0 0.83. Is this correct? If uh, or something mistake here. So, what is this going to be? 7, 3, 10 plus 1. It is only giving me 0 0.9, right? Can you check what is 1 by 2 to the power 5? 
Hmm? So did I make any mistake? Find out what is 1 minus this quantity? Okay, approximately I will write 0.97. Okay. And uh, type 2 error is going to be this. So notice that here type 1 error is less than this much, this probability, whereas type 2 error is so much, it is saying it is going to be 0 0.97. You wanted what? Type 2 error to go? You also wanted type 2 error to be small as well, right? But uh, if you are going to take a such a simple test, you are happy with respect to type 1 error. Type 1 error is small, but your type 2 error is very bad. So type 2 error is going to be very bad. So what is type 2 error here is like type 2 error is uh, it is coming from yeah so in this case like when theta is greater than half right and uh, it may happen that even when theta is greater than ha half you may see some zeros in your sequence and when you see zeros in your you may not see all the time 5 and because of that you may not reject it. So because of that the time to error could be high. Okay? So there is always trade off like any test may not be good. Let us look into another case test 2. So in this case I want to be slightly smarter and uh, I know that out of 5 and majority of them are 1, then I will reject. Like majority means at least there are 3 successes or 4 successes or 5 successes, then I am reject. Okay? Now what for that test you can compute what is the probability of beta 2, what is your power function. That is this is probability that you are going to see 3 successes, this is probability that you are going to see 4 successes and probability that you are going to see 5 successes. So this one is little more involved now I do not know how to bound it like if theta is less than or equals to half what is its value you can compute and you can then also compute its type 2 error bounds then you can see that it will have a better type 2 error compared to the first one. So which of the test 1 like obviously by just looking into that test 2 is going to be better than test 1 right simply saying all ones is not a good reason to reject okay fine so work out more maybe on this test 2 example and see what is the type 2 error you are going to get okay let's uh, stop here